Good morning, everybody. My name is Del. Um, I'm Grayson. And we are the senior leaders of Legacy Church. And this morning, we've got an incredible morning for you. Absolutely. We've got uh, some worship and we've got a preach. But I just asked right from the start, just to lean into what God is going to do in your life. Wherever you are, wherever you are viewing this from, in your living room, your, your bedroom, wherever it is, just lean in. And I know God is going to do something in your life. Totally. So get ready. Worship him with, with your full heart and just listen then in the preach of what God is going to say to you. That the Holy Spirit move in your home where you are right now and, and just allow him to just lead you and guide you in what he's saying to you and if you want to connect anytime we are down in Swansea and we're up in Doncaster and if you're near any of those locations why don't you just come along in the morning 11 o'clock and just come and see us in person we'd love to get to know you but for now just it's soak in what God is going to do for you and you can even look us up on the website which is legacychurch.co.uk Yes, fantastic. You just worship now and just love and soak up who God is Absolutely. in your room. Amen.
Hey, good morning. Great to have you with us at Legacy Online. Brilliant that you could join us this morning or whenever you were joining us and watching us. Listen, just want to just say that we've been looking at this series on faith for the last five weeks now. And um, today I want to talk about creating a faith connection. Faith sometimes, when we think about it, we think, oh, well, that's all I need is I've got to believe God. I've got to look to God and I've got to make sure that I'm in faith. Yeah, that's really important. But also in the Bible, we see that there are connection points of faith where two people come together. And because of the coming together, faith is released, the miracle happens and the breakthrough comes. And so I want to talk about that this morning. And so as I'm sharing, why don't you connect your faith to what I'm saying and let's believe for miracles even as we release the word of God. The Bible says this, that the signs and wonders shall follow the preaching of the word. So as I preach this morning, be ready for God to do something. Connect your faith to what I'm saying and let's believe for a divine connection of faith that will create the miracle that you need in your life. I'm reading from Acts chapter 3, 1 to 10 and then I want to just share on what happens in this setting and talk about this faith connection that I mentioned. It says this, one day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter he asked them for money. Then Peter said, Uh, Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went into the temple courts, jumping, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Faith, this thing that we've been talking about over the last number of weeks is the most important thing for you and me as Christians. In the Old Testament, it was about law. It was about rules. Well, it was portrayed in that way. Even in the Old Testament, it was all about faith, but there was more duty set to it. When we come to the New Testament, we see that that faith is fundamental, but also crucial to us connecting with God and then living for God. So we find that we need faith for salvation. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says this, for it is by grace you've been saved through faith. And this, not from yourself, it is the gift of God, not by works so that nobody can boast. So salvation is fundamentally by grace through faith. God's grace is unmerited favor. We have to access it by faith. Also, faith is crucial for living for God. Romans 1 verse 17 says, For in the gospel the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is from faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. So we are called to enter salvation by faith, but we've got to live by faith. And so faith is our righteousness. The righteous shall live by faith. The righteous is not the righteous shall do good works or the righteous shall think this way or act this way. No, the righteous shall live by faith. And so faith is fundamental to you and me living for God. 
We have to have faith to please God. It says this, Hebrews eleven six, and without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that, re- that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So if we want to activate our connection with God, if we want to please God, then it's got to come from faith. You might be thinking, oh, I did wrong today. I'm displeasing God. No, God is pleased with faith, not with works, not just the things that you do, not the way that you try to manage your life, not your self-effort, but faith in what he has accomplished for us. And then faith is crucial for receiving from God. Matthew 9, 22, Jesus turned and saw her take heart daughter. He said, your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that very moment. Faith is absolutely necess- uh, ne- necessary for you and me to connect with God, to get from God what he wants to give us. And sometimes what happens to us is we fall into the trap of thinking God doesn't want to do for us. He doesn't want to do a miracle. He's holding back from us and, and we justify it and we rationalize and we think all about it and we, we try and work it all out. And what we're actually doing is moving further and further and further away from faith because now we are focusing on our thinking, our understanding, our logic rather than on God's word and what he says to us. The Bible declares that God is still the same God as he's always been. He's still the one who wants to impact your life, who wants to do miracles. The miracle working God of the New Testament, of the Old Testament, hasn't changed. He's still transforming people. He's still saving people. He's still working in people's lives. And he's still doing miracles today through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So I want to talk about how we, how we um, go about creating a faith connection. In the story we just read, Peter and James and John, sorry, had 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 an experience with Jesus. They'd spoken on the day of Pentecost. They'd seen 3,000 people bow the knee before Jesus. The church had blossomed and flourished into this vibrant entity. They were meeting together in each other's houses. But what they used to do in, in it's still in their tradition, if you like, they went to the temple to pray. They were still living part of what was the law and part of what this new faith they'd experienced in Jesus. They were still Jews. They were still fundamental in their thinking. And so every uh, time they'd go to the temple, they'd go up for the prayer meeting. The prayer would take place at three o'clock. It was the last prayer of the day. And so they would go into the temple. Come on, John, let's go up to the temple. Let's go and pray. Let's go and seek God. We know that God doesn't um, dwell in houses or temples, but there was something about them that drew them to go up to where everybody would be. There was a lot of activity. Jesus had a lot of activity in the temple. And so the temple was was a set place for them. It was an important place. And as they're making their way up to the temple, they're moving up towards this beautiful gate. It's called the beautiful gate. It was an ornate gate, incredible value, huge gate. All the gates were large, 12 gates around the temple, but this one was a massive gate that was ornate, valuable, and incredibly beautiful to look at, hence its name. It was the entrance point into the temple. They were going, it was on their way that they see this guy, and more importantly, this guy sees them. He's being carried by a couple of guys, and he's being put outside the gate so that he can beg for money so that he can live. In those days, like today very often, well, in those days, no social system. There was no place where they could find money. They either had money through begging, through the the goodwill of other people, or they died. And so this guy would have been placed there. He'd been from birth a cripple. He was lame. He was unable to do anything for himself. So all his life, he'd lived with a limitation, restriction, pain. He had lived from a perspective of lying down or being carried by others. That was his life perspective. And so begging had become his occupation. It wasn't just something that he did. He was probably very skilled at it. He was was aware of his situation. He was aware of what's going on. And, And this guy knew what it was to live in a life of restriction. He'd never run, he'd never walked, he'd never been able to do what everybody else had done. In his setting, he was just stretched out 
I'm just somebody who would have to be picked up, carried everywhere he would go. He had no independence. He had no ability to get where he wanted to go. And the problem for him was it wasn't just a physical condition, condition, but it's also seen as a spiritual condition. It's interesting that he's outside the gate beautiful. Why is he outside? Because he wasn't welcomed into the temple the same as everybody else. In John chapter 9, when Jesus is walking along, the disciples see a blind man and they say, whose sin is it that this man was born blind? Was it him or was it his parents? The theory, the philosophy of the day, the theology of the day, if you like, is if you had a problem, either you've done something wrong or your parents have done something wrong and really it's your fault. And so for this guy, he's living with the pressures of being a physical crippled, but also there's something going on deeper. Emotionally and spiritually, he feels isolated. He feels rejected. He feels less than. He's outside this incredibly value, valuable gate, and yet he feels less than anybody else around him. He's put here every day. This is the place where he would beg. This is the place where he would come and he would ask people who were going into the temple to help him. Same place every day, same place doing the same things, begging, hoping to get enough to get by so that he could look after himself, to pay his bills, to look, get some food, and so that that was his trade, if you like. That was his way of getting by. You see, the temple was a place of freedom. It spoke of a God of miracle. It spoke of a God of love. It spoke of a God who had worked in people's lives. It was the place where people came to worship God. And yet for this man, every day he was placed outside this gate, the temple to him mocked him. It almost said to him, you're rejected. It almost said to him, you're unaccepted. It, it spoke to him of his condition. It spoke to him of his problem. And you know, sometimes when, when we come into church, we have to realize that very often we can go into church, we can come into the presence of God and still leave the same. This guy daily would go to the temple. He would be out, just outside the temple. He was in the proximity of God, where the presence of God was. He was inside of all the religious situation, but he came and went home exactly the same. You can come to church and be near Jesus and yet go home the same. The problem for this man was it was a religious connection, but it wasn't a faith connection. You see, the chances are that this man had been put at the beautiful gate when Jesus had walked into there. So he may have seen Jesus walk by him, but he never connected with Jesus and got more than what he needed. He may be, oh no, we don't know what's going on. But the fact is, this man was in the proximity of God and yet never experience the power of God. You can come into a place of beauty because that's what he was placed every day and feel really ugly. You can come into a place of incredible worth and yet all it does is make you feel worthless. And maybe, maybe for you in your life, you feel less than, you feel isolated, you feel restricted, you feel limited, you feel as if people are moving on and you are just stuck you're in the beautiful place, but you don't feel beautiful. On the inside, you know that there's something to miss, there's something missing. You see, come into church, listening to me today, go into uh, services, reading your Bible, doing the things you do. All of that is fine, but if there's no faith connected to it, if there's not a connection of faith, then what we end up doing is we end up perpetuating the same thing all the time. We end up going through the motions. We end up just coming and going, coming and going. Nothing changes. Nothing actually shifts. He sees Peter and uh, John walking towards where he's going. But listen what it says. Verse 2. Now a man was, who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful. So very often when people talk about this story, they say there's a man outside the Beautiful gate. But he's not. He's being carried to it. So he's probably on his way, James and John, to get to the beautiful gate. There was 14 steps that had to be walked up, historians say. And then you come to this huge ornate gate. He would have been placed there. Did he see G G John, uh, Peter and John coming from a different direction? Were they catching up with him because they were struggling to get him? We don't know exactly what's going on, but he's going to the beautiful gate because he knows that's where 
all of the traffic is going to be. He knows that when people are going into the temple, they're much more probably, um, they're much more likely to give into his pot because they're going to worship God. They're more sensitized to the needs around them. Also, as they're walking in, they are probably more aware of God's law to look after everybody, to take care of everybody. Part of religion in Jerusalem and, and for the Jews was make sure you are your brother's keeper. Make sure you're looking after them. So he would be in this place it was a great place to beg. And as he's come into this place, there's almost this connection of Peter and John and him and the people who are carrying him. Because it says that as he gets, as he's being carried there, he sees Peter and John. And ha as he sees them, he then reaches out and asks them for money. You know, the, the funny thing about, about this guy, he's come into the spot where he's been every day. He's in the presence of God, but he's never experienced the power of God. And you know, religion, religion very often mocks us because what, what, we, what we need is an encounter with God. But very often, that's all religion gives us is, is a setting where God is, but it doesn't connect us. Religion never connects us with God. Faith connects us with God. Faith is the foundation of relationship, like I said right at the beginning. And so he sees Peter come in, he sees John come in, and whether they're trying to put him down or they're just on the journey, he reaches out to him and he says, hey, I was about giving me something. And, and so we see that he is reaching, expecting from these guys to give him something. I wonder what you were expecting from God this morning. I wonder if you're expecting an encouraging word. I wonder if you're expecting to just do your duty. Yep, watch church. Yep, con connected with that. I wonder if you're expecting God to really do something for you. I wonder if you're expecting a connection of faith this morning. Where's your expectation this morning? You see, this guy was expecting money. He was expecting a long day sitting outside these beautiful gates. He was expecting to connect with people. He was being carried there. It's three in the afternoon. He knows that this is a time when everybody's going to be turning up for prayer. And so it's a good time to get his spot and then get some money and maybe go home for the rest of the day. And then he'll be back the same time tomorrow. Maybe that's his spot at the beautiful gate. You see, the problem with him, he was systematized into what his expectations were. He was expecting, but it was only a tip. It was only something from a passerby. But today... Jesus was going to change his life. And I, I want to lift your expectation today. God wants to connect with you through your faith to give you a miracle today. I believe that God wants to do something for you. Faith is, a, is, a, is, a act, is an active thing and he wants to do something in your life. Note a few things that Peter does. First of all, Peter says to him, give me your attention. He says, look at us. Peter comes to him. The guy is being carried. He asks for money. Peter immediately says, look at us. Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have, I give to you. What was Peter doing? He was calling, calling his attention to them. You see, the problem for this guy, every person that passed by was just an opportunity for money. Every person that passed by was just a punter that he could get something from. Peter was calling his attention. And I don't want to just drop something into your bucket. I don't want to just give you a hand out. I want to give you a hand up today. And right now, God is calling our attention and he's saying, look, look at me. Don't look at your circumstances. Don't look at your surroundings. Don't look at the things that's going on. Don't look at, you know, the person who's sitting next to you or the problems that you've been thinking about or the concerns you've got for today or the meetings that you've got coming up or the family that's going to be calling later or that problem. Because distraction in life draws us into a multitude of things. And if we're going to live by faith and if we're going to get a faith connection, we've got to focus. We've got to give our attention to the thing that God wants to. And I want you to give me your attention for the next five or ten minutes. I want you to give God your attention right now. This man, he could see everything going on around him. He probably could see people passing by. Maybe he said to Peter and John, excuse me, would you give me some? And then he's talking to the next guy, excuse me, would you give me? And Peter's saying, look at us, look at us. 
Focus, give me your attention. Because this is not about just getting something that you always have. This is about God doing something brand new. And I want to say to you right now, God is calling each one of us to give us his attention. Give him our attention. That we would give him our attention. That we're not going to be distracted and we're not going to be looking this way and that way. To give him our attention because God wants to do something in your life right now. Focus is so important when we think about the things of God. Focus is so important when we think about connecting with faith. You can't connect with faith and doubt. You can't connect with God and the world around you. You have to focus. You have to say, God, right, okay, I'll give you my attention. What do you want to say to me? What do you want to do in me? I'm ready, God. I'm anticipating. This man was expecting something to hit his cup. God wanted to overflow into his life. God wanted to do a miracle for him. Second thing, Peter spoke to his condition. He says this in verse 6. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, walk. Peter didn't sit down with the guy and said, hey, listen, how's life? How are you coping? How's, let, let's have a bit of a counseling session. Let's try and understand how you're feeling. What's going on in your life? Peter didn't even question what he wanted. He spoke, <coughs> excuse me, he spoke directly to the need. He spoke right to it. And if we're going to create a faith connection, we need to be open for God to speak right into our lives. I want to speak to you right now. I don't, I don't care what your need is. I don't know what your need is. It doesn't matter. Let me put it that way. Not I don't care. It doesn't matter what your need is. God wants to speak to it. Be healed right now. Receive right now. Release right now. Remove right now. God is the God who speaks to it. And I want you to understand that God doesn't want to know how you got where you got. He already knows that. We don't need to analyze what God thinks about your past, the situation you've been through. You might be saying, you don't know who I am. God doesn't, he's not interested in what you've done, what you haven't done, what you feel, what you, how you've let him down or you've let others down. He wants to speak to your condition now walk. Walking is movement. Walking is moving forward. Walking is progress from. Walk, the word walk has so many connotations to it. And what Peter is saying is, get up and move from where you are. God wants to move us in our thinking. He wants to move us in our emotions. He wants to move us spiritually. He wants to move us physically. Move from where we are. <coughs> Excuse me, far too often. In, in our lives, we analyze faith and we try to critique and look at things. And what about this? And what about that? God just wants to speak to your life today. He wants to speak right into your life today. He wants to speak into the deepest part of you. I want to do a miracle for you. Will you let me do a miracle? Will you allow me? Will you allow me to say walk? Walk from that situation. Walk from that pain. Walk from that unforgiveness. Walk from that bitter experience. Walk from that illness. Walk from that limitation and restriction. Walk from that bondage that you keep feeling. God wants you to walk forward and it's an act of faith. It's an act where we receive the word of God. And I want to say to you today, walk in Jesus' name. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Third thing, Peter reached out to connect by faith. He spoke to the man. He didn't ask him. He spoke to him in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, walk. Then he says he reached out his hand and pulled the man up onto his feet. He took hold of him. Peter didn't, he didn't wait for a response. He didn't wait to discuss. He didn't say, what do you think about that? Or what do you think? He pulled him into the miracle that God had for him. And for you and me, we need to understand that faith pulls. Faith pulls us into the miraculous. If you can imagine, we are living in a physical world. God has already won for us salvation, healing, destiny, forgiveness, all the things that we want. We live in physically. And what he asks us to do is by faith to build a bridge into the spiritual world by faith 
so that he can pull us from where we are to where he wants us to be. The miracle is here. God wants to pull us into the miracle. Healing is here. He wants to pull us into healing. How can he pull us? By faith. And right now, Jesus is wanting to pull you into that place of the miracle that you can get. I wonder how many of us have been prayed for or heard a word like this and we walk away thinking, yeah, that's good for them. Yeah, I hope that works for them. I don't think God's going to do it for me. Yeah, I don't think God's ready for me. I doubt God will do anything for me. I don't think I'm ready. Yeah, but the problem is it's okay saying that, but I I still feel the pain. I still... Peter pulled up this man when the man had never, ever walked. There was no muscle. There was no... The bones weren't straight. The legs were twisted. There was no muscle at all. If you've ever seen somebody who's been crippled all their life, that there's just flesh hanging on bone. Why? Because they haven't used those muscles to build any content in their body. But it says that as Peter pulled this man, as he touched him, faith flowed through Peter's hand into his body so that his bones became strong. His, His muscles started to be strong. This man had never walked. Have you ever seen a baby start to walk? They, they get up, they fall down. They get up, they fall down. They get up, they fall down. Then, then slowly they start to move, they crawl, and then they start to slowly walk, and then they fall down. What are they doing? They're learning to walk. This guy never learned to walk. He simply walked. The miracle wasn't just in the healing that took place. It was in how the healing took place. Peter pulled him into a miracle. And right now, by faith, I want to pull you into the miracle that God has got for you. I want to hold you into what God has got. I want to get you into that place of expectation, that place of receiving, that place right now where you can get what God has got for you. Peter reached out his hand. Whenever God does a miracle and somebody is there, there's an activation of faith. And so we see the woman with the issue of blood I spoke about a couple of weeks ago. She reaches out to Jesus and touches him. And as she touches him, there's a flow and release. The 10 lepers, Jesus just spoke to them, but it's as they went that the miracle took place. Listen to what it says. When he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. As they went. You see, there's got to be an activation in us. We've got to leave. We've got to be pulled into our future. And right now, God wants to pull you into that brand new place, that brand new future, that brand new experience, that, that miracle that you want. God wants to pull you into it or push you into it, whichever way. You've got to move into it. Don't say it's not happened. Don't say it won't happen. Don't say, oh, well, you know, I don't feel anything and I don't get anything. Go, move into it by faith and make a faith connection with God so that you can move into what he's got for you. The man's response, as soon as Peter pulled his hand, it says that life flowed through him. What did he do? He jumped up. And he walked into the temple. Now he's moving from outside to inside. Why? Because he's healed. The the healing wasn't just physically. It was emotionally. It was spiritually. There's something that took place in this guy's life. Now he's not outside the gates. He's walking into the temple. Doing what? Praising God. It says he's jumping and leaping and walking and praising. Everybody's saying, isn't that the guy who's always outside? He's changed. Why has he changed? Because he had a faith connection with Peter and John. Because something happens in this guy. You see, the man was expecting to get a tip from Peter. Just get some money. Peter brought healing that would mean he could now earn money for the rest of his life. God is not into fixing your problem. He's into fixing you. He's not into just healing or just tipping. He's not into giving a bit of money. He wants to heal the whole man. And for you and me, I don't know what your your need is right now. I don't know what it is that God is speaking to you about, but I know this. Right now, you can have a faith connection. Right now, you can connect with the Word of God. You can connect with the prayer that I'm going to pray in a moment, and you can get an experience and an encounter with this God who does, who does something real. We, I want to pull you into a miracle. I want to lift you out of where you are and set you free to enter into a big open space where God dwells. Not a space where I can't, I'm limited, I'm restricted, 
I'm, I'm dependent, I, I, I need this and I need that. We've all got needs, but God wants to set us free that we're not just, not, is not just that we, we get rid of our needs, but we meet in other people's needs. Right now, where you are, I want to pray for you that today you would have this God connection, that we would create a faith connection as you decide right now, I'm going to receive my miracle. You might have come on this morning and you might be sitting there thinking, well, I'm just expecting a word. I just want a message. I wonder what they were talking about in church. I wonder what Gray's going to say this morning. Listen, forget all that. What is God saying to you this morning, this moment, this time? What is he speaking to you about? What things in your life are restricting you? What things are keeping you outside of his presence that he wants to get rid of? What things are limiting you? What things are keeping you dependent on your old life that he wants to say, come on, he wants to speak to. He wants to say, walk, I want you to move. I want to pull you into a new life, pull you into a new situation, pull you into now becoming a completely different person. I wonder what things you need. Maybe it's physical health. Maybe it's mental health. Maybe you're emotionally feeling strung out because of the season that you've been through. Maybe you're worried because you're looking at the future and you're thinking, God, I don't know where it's going to, I don't know how I'm going to make ends meet. Maybe for you, it's a relational problem. Maybe it's fatigue or maybe you just run dry on God. Maybe you're thinking, I can't go anymore. You've lost your confidence and Instead of faith, you've got fear. Maybe for you, I don't know what the blank is for you, but it doesn't matter what it is. God knows. And so right now, I'm going to pray and we're going to create a faith connection. That by faith, you'll receive what God has got for you. That by faith, you today will make a decision and move forward. You may not feel it. You may not... You may not see it immediately, but as I pull you by faith into the miracle, God's going to bring that release. He's going to bring that ability to move forward in your life. But first of all, before I pray, if you have never given your life to Jesus, I want to invite you today to bow your head where you are. Just close your eyes where you are and pray this prayer in your heart after me. Because if you are not living yet for Jesus, maybe you're living for Jesus or you've made a decision, but you're not now activating your faith. You've you've run out of room. You've, you've, You've got stuck. Today, I want to pull you into that place where you say to Jesus, yes, once again. Just pray these words after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you today and I thank you for Jesus. Thank you that he died for me to give me freedom, to give me life, to give me a hope and a future. And so, Jesus, I invite you into my heart. Come in, be Lord of my life, and help me to live for you from this moment on. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I turn away from living for myself. I choose to live for you. In your precious name, amen. If you've done that, write to us at info at legacychurch.co.uk or contact somebody that you know and let Let us know that you made that decision. But but for for those of you who are watching, and maybe for you, you're already a follower of Jesus. You've you've got a faith that you've placed in him. But maybe for you, there's now restriction and limitation. Maybe for you, God is highlighting something that's stopping you moving forward. I want to pull you by faith into that place. I don't know what your need is, but I know that God wants to do a miracle for you. I know that there's somebody watching And for you, it's a relational issue, not with God, but with people. You're feeling the breakdown of relationship and you're feeling the restriction and you're on the inside of you. You feel the intimidation or the that that, that feeling of uncomfortableness around certain people. I want to say to you today, God wants to do a miracle for you. He wants you to walk forward in faith, believe in him with the outcome, not trying to deal with it yourself. Somebody else, it's a physical issue. You you just need healing. Whatever your need, it doesn't matter. Let's create a faith connection today, you and me. If you can imagine me by faith pulling you, respond to that, even if you do it physically. 
respond to it and allow God to say, God, I'm getting my healing today. I'm getting my breakthrough today, whatever you need. As I pray these words, by faith, receive your miracle today in Jesus' name. And let's pull you into a new future. Come on, let's pray. Father, I pray for every, every person who is listening to me right now. You know their needs. You know where they're stuck. You know the limitation and restriction. You know the isolation and the, the, the place where they find themselves. They feel out of it all. They feel outside. They feel disconnected. They feel as if they're just beggars. I pray that you would put value on them. I pray that you would make the worthless feel worthy, that you would make the unaccepted feel accepted. Those who need a miracle today, whether it's breakthrough, I pull them in faith right now in Jesus' name. I pull them into that miracle, into that healing, into that place of deliverance, into that place of abundance, into that place of breakthrough, that they would move forward. I pray now, walk in Jesus' name. Move forward. I pray strength into that area of weakness where there's no muscle, whether it's physically, emotionally, mentally. Whatever it is, I pray the muscle would grow. I pray that the fatigue would go. I pray that there would be a new leaping and jumping and there'd be a new praise in God and that you would do the miracle for them. I pray, Father, you right now, as we connect in faith together, you would do something powerful in their lives. For we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Listen, it's not just about having a moment. It's about building momentum. And the way we build momentum in our lives is we receive from God and then we speak out to ourselves and others what we believe God has done for us. The miracle sometimes takes time to manifest. Other times it's immediate. Whatever it is, if you've had a miracle, write to us. But if you're believing for a miracle and you have made a declaration, write to us so that we can agree together. It's the faith connection that's really important. And let's see God do what he wants to do in our lives and through our lives. Listen, God bless you. It's been great to be with you this week. Get in touch with us. Let us know how things are going for you so that we can pray with you and believe with you. God bless you in Jesus' name.